Join us and help us continue to support the many talented people of our community. Learn how to get your business highlighted on Lacrosse Local. Go to lacrosselocal.com and click on advertise. The Pump House Regional Arts Center brings you live, heartfelt performances from gifted singer songwriters. Enjoy original music brought to stage by area mainstay musicians and sought after regional bands. Check out the concert series online and pick up your tickets at thepumphouse.org. We check in with the hard driving string band Dig Deep. We talk about the formation of the band in Stevens Point, their album Heavy Heart what to expect from live shows, and where to find out more. Check out Dig Deep at Alpine Inn in La Crosse on Friday, March 31st. You can find more conversation, food reviews, weekend picks, live music, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Oscar Netzel. I am originally from sort of the Managua Park Falls area in between there. I live in Stevens Point now. I guess I've always been into music since I was very young. What got me into bluegrass music is that when I was a kid, I was really into punk rock and I liked bluegrass because it was like country music, but it had really fast tempos, which is what I really, apparently what I really like about music. You know, just kind of listening to your music the last couple of days, you say the punk rock aspect of it. I kind of heard some influences that are like a little, not necessarily grimier, but almost sea shanty-ish. Do you feel that way in some ways, some of your music? Like what are some of your influences? I think the biggest influence on Dig Deep as a band is probably the 357 string band from Milwaukee. Pretty much all of us agree that this band wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for them. Otherwise, we listen to a lot of punk, a lot of metal, and of course, other bluegrass and like alternative country music and stuff like that. So how did you guys eventually just like come together? We all used to be including our current bass player. All of us, including our original bass player, were in a different band called the Ditch Runners. And then we quit that band and started this new one. In terms of the Stevens Point area, and that's where you guys kind of originated and got together? On average, yeah. I've seen a, a lot of different bands that are coming out of there from bluegrass to country bands. I don't know that scene very well. What's going on up there? I think the biggest band that most people would recognize from there is Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, some good friends of ours. Armchair Boogie originated there. They all live in and around Madison now. And right now, I think my favorite band in Stevens Point is Hemlock Chaser. Hmm. So what's the deal with that area? I haven't really spent any time there, so I'm just kind of wondering, what would you compare it to? Is it something that was, is a community that you feel is inviting for musicians? Or it just seems to be a lot coming out of that region for music. Yeah, it's it's like a small college town. So a lot of these like horseshoes and hand grenades and armchair boogie in particular, mostly met while they were all in college together. Otherwise, the, the music scene there is pretty good. Venues are like a the right sized venue sort of hard to come by. There's lots of really small places. And then there's some other there's like the university has some spots to play at. But finding the right size venue for a band like ours to throw like a really big party is sort of difficult, especially in the downtown area. There's plenty of big spaces all around town. But yeah, it's a good place to start a band if you're, you know, going to college or something. So, you know, checking out your music also, it looks like Heavy Heart was your latest release. Uh, yes. What was the process for putting that one together? You know, like, did you just slap it down pretty quick? Did it take some time? Or how did that whole process come about? Heavy Heart, if I remember correctly, we recorded over maybe like a six-month period in three different sessions. 
we were able to get a couple songs done in a day at a time. And they're all, almost all of those songs were songs that we had been playing live. There was just uh, one or two that had been basically new for the album for us. So it looks like it came out right before COVID hit too. So that was probably a relief in some ways. <laughs> yeah, in a way it came out in February of 2020 and we had a tour planned to like play out the new album uh, across the country, but that tour would have started St. Patrick's day 2020, which is the day that everything like officially shut down basically in mm-hmm. Wisconsin. You know, just seeing your name come up, you know, for various shows around the lacrosse area, but also for different festivals. Have you kind of seen a some sort of like elevated people are interested in your music recently? Because your name has come up consistently just in my realm related to festivals and music in the area. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've, I'm I'm definitely feeling a lot more interest in what we're doing, which sort of makes sense as time goes on. More yeah. people hear about you. So. You're playing the Alpine Inn and Lacrosse Friday, March 31st. What can people expect from your shows? They can expect uh, four dudes with varying levels of facial hair playing uh. really fast bluegrass and also some swingy bluegrass. And if you see us walk in without our instruments, you would probably think that a punk or a metal band was playing. <laughs> Sweet. What are you listening to right now? Like, what's an album that's on repeat? Ooh, um, this is going to be a weird answer. I've been listening to this uh, electronic artist <laughs> called Choke Chain. Actually, I think he's from Lacrosse. He is. Yes, he um, is. Yeah. Otherwise, I've been listening to a decent amount of alternative country, Charlie Crockett, Orville Peck, the new Nicky Lane album. And... There's a, oh, I forget which, which Ricky Skaggs album I've been really into lately. It's like a, a Keith Whitley and Ricky Skaggs. Sweet. So if people want to follow along, you know, find out more about the band, listen to music, what's, what's the best avenue for them to go to? Sure. Um, you can find us on, you can find Dig Deep on Facebook, on Instagram at Dig Deep WI. Uh, we have a Bandcamp page. We have a website. If you Google us, Google dig deep band and not just dig deep. Otherwise you get workout websites and (laughs) a charity for drilling wells on the Navajo reservation, I believe, which Which is, you know, is, is also great. (laughs) Sounds like a good cause. Right. So do you, so do you have anything on the horizon to share? Like you got any new music coming out or what's, what's happening in 2023? 2023, we're trying to hit the road a little bit harder. We don't have any new releases slotted, but they're, definitely is a potential that for that for the second half of the year any big festivals you can announce uh, i know that we can currently say that we're playing at the sylvie in madison in january coming up here i believe we're playing at flat rock music festival pond stock in nebraska I'm trying to think i think a lot of other stuff isn't currently currently out yet but basically, if people, the first time, if people want to come check you out in lacrosse, would be at Alpine Inn Friday, March 31st. Correct. Awesome. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.